Good evening. Today I'd like to reflect with you on the Gospel for Wednesday of the 13th week in Ordinary Time. It's taken from the 8th chapter of St. Matthew, verses 28 through 34. When Jesus came to the territory of the Gadarenes, two demoniacs who were coming from the tombs met him. They were so savage that no one could travel by that road. They cried out, What have you to do with us, Son of God? Have you come here to torment us before the appointed time? Some distance away, a herd of many swine was feeding. The demons pleaded with him, If you drive us out, send us into the herd of swine. And he said to them, Go then. They came out and entered the swine, and the whole herd rushed down the steep bank into the sea, where they drowned. The swine herds ran away, and when they came to the town, they reported everything, including what had happened to the demoniacs. Thereupon the whole town came out to meet Jesus, and when they saw him, they begged him to leave their district. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So today we have Jesus going into the district of the Gadarenes. It was a pagan territory, and he, that is where he chose to dwell. He had just crossed the sea with his disciples in the boat. The disciples are silent in this episode, but they are with Jesus. They came to this territory, a pagan territory, where the name of God was never spoken or invoked, where there were no places to truly worship God. And then two demoniacs who were coming from the tombs met him. They were coming from the place of death, and they were so savage that no one could travel by the road. They terrorized everyone, and they themselves were victims of spiritual terrorism. But Jesus drew near, and in the presence of the divine, they immediately react. What have you to do with us, son of God? We see that they know exactly who Jesus is. They recognize the divine presence, just as the leper did when he asked Jesus to be healed, just as the centurion did when he said, Lord, if you just say the word, I know my servant will get better, just as Simon's mother-in-law did when she was healed in the house in Capernaum, just as many people who brought the sick to Jesus for healing or the possessed for exorcism, they recognize Jesus' divine presence. So too, even these demons recognize the presence of the Son of God. What have you to do with us, Son of God? For they don't want have to have anything to do with him. They ask, have you come here to torment us before the appointed time? The divine presence there is a sign of the coming of the kingdom of God and the retreat of the kingdom of the evil one. Yes, the old lit lit liturgy and rituals for exorcism spoke of Jesus coming at the end of time to judge the living and the dead and the world with fire. It was a warning to the devil of what awaited him. Have you come here to torment us before the appointed time? Rather than seeing the divine presence as a healing balm, they see it as utter torment because they love the darkness. Meanwhile, some distance away, a herd of many swine was feeding. St. Matthew includes this detail because the swine were considered by Jews to be the most unclean of animals. One would become unclean by touching them. And, and this is where the evil one chose to dwell, amongst the unclean animals, amongst the dead in the tombs. And the demons pleaded, if you drive us out, send us into the herd of swine. This is where they wanted to go. And Jesus doesn't get chatty with the devil. He doesn't get chatty. He simply says in one word in Greek and two in English, go then. Or we could simply say, get out and they obey. He has authority over them. He casts them out by his authority as God, for that is who Jesus is. He is true God and true man. And by his power as God, he casts them out into the swine. And they enter the swine and the whole herd then rushes down the steep bank into the sea where they drowned. You can see the, that with sin, with evil, there is a kind of a restlessness. As soon as they go into the swine, they run down this bank and into the sea. And in, in, in an ancient mind, the sea was also a locus of death, a place of great danger. And that's where they went. But St. Matthew continues the story. The swine herds ran away. He doesn't say the shepherds, but those who dealt with the unclean animals. They ran away. Rather than embrace Jesus, 
who has cast out the demons. They run away. They report everything to the townspeople. And again, rather than receiving Jesus as the one sent by the Father to bring them healing, to bring the kingdom, they ask Jesus to leave their district. What have you to do with us, Son of God? We don't want to have anything to do with you. I suppose we could all ask that question when we encounter Jesus. What have you to do with us, Son of God? Jesus comes to forgive our sins, to heal what is broken, what is lost, to be our Redeemer. And during the month of July, we have a special devotion in the church to the precious blood of Jesus by which we were redeemed. But sometimes we don't want to let Jesus enter into our life. We prefer our sinfulness and our way of life because his presence, and since he is love itself, his love, his presence and his love, they make demands upon us. Do we want to leave our old life behind? Or are we, do we prefer to be like the townspeople who beg him to leave? Do not bother me too much. Do not ask me to change too much. Jesus has come to convert. Repent, the kingdom of God is at hand. And he goes even to the pagan territory. Today in the United States, we celebrate the feast of St. Junipero Serra. He was canonized five years ago by Pope Francis. He's become a somewhat controversial figure. He represents the state of California in the Capitol Rotunda, and yet in, in, in a church in Los Angeles, uh, in the city of San Francisco, his statue has been torn down. Historical revisionists want to portray him as one who was very cruel to the Indians who brought slaughter and death, who forced the faith upon them. In truth, he built many of the California missions. He proposed the faith, but never imposed it. He, he wanted to do good for the people and bring them salvation. He worked tirelessly. He even walked on foot to Mexico City to plead for the rights of native peoples. He lamented the ills of many of the Spanish soldiers and colonists who would sexually abuse native women. He preached the gospel to the peoples of California. When he canonized him, Pope Francis said this of Father Serra, Junipero Serra. Father Serra had a motto which inspired his life and work, not just a saying, but above all, a reality which shaped the way he lived. Siempre adelante. Keep more moving forward. For him, this was the way to continue experiencing the joy of the gospel, to keep his heart from growing numb, from being anesthetized. He kept moving forward because the Lord was waiting. He kept going because his brothers and sisters were waiting. He kept going forward to the end of his life. Today, like him, may we be able to say forward. Let's keep moving forward. Yes, Jesus moved forward, even into the pagan lands, and even when he didn't have success, he still brought good news. Let us also ha bring good news to others. What have you to do with us, Son of God? You have everything to do with us. You are like us in all things but sin. You have everything to do with us. You have chosen to be our friend, our Redeemer, and our Savior. May you be praised now and forever.